All right, the big fish has been landed. The latest Manning in the quarterback lineage, Arch Manning, son of Cooper, nephew to Peyton and Eli, grandson to Archie, has verbally committed to the University of Texas at Austin. Bomb. I really am kind of surprised by this one. Texas has been atrocious pretty much his entire lifetime. I mean, Texas hasn't been good since 2009, honestly. And it's been a pretty much downfall of a program. But Steve Sarkeesian, their head coach, has a really strong track record with quarterbacks. And let's not kid ourselves. The bankroll of Texas is as good as anybody's out there. I'll be really interested to see what the final numbers were for Arch Manning. He's a guy who actually can benefit from name, image, and likeness as a high school kid without even having to play it down. He is such a massive name. The Manning brand brings all other things with it. And plus, he's keeping up the tradition of the family and staying in the SEC Texas technically because Texas is heading towards the Southeastern Conference. I'm going to break down everything going on with this. What does this mean for the rest of the college football landscape? And is this a final, final commit? Or is there any chance he's changing his mind as the season go on? He still has a senior season to be played in Louisiana. But if you could first like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you get these daily update videos, share this video with your friend. It really helps the channel out a lot. We are growing like crazy. All right, so I'm kind of shocked by this one. Arch Manning, number one quarterback, number one player in the class of 2023, announced on Instagram, Twitter, all his socials that he is committed to the University of Texas. Look at that. He's got a nice showing him at a workout there. Texas has always been high on his list. It was pretty much a decent list of four or five schools. I always thought he was going to end up at Ole Miss with Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin probably has the best track record with developing quarterbacks in college football. I mean, it speaks for himself. He's got NFL head coaching experience. And Ole Miss is where his grandpa went. It's where his dad went. It's where one of his uncles went. You know, Peyton's the oddball in the family going to Tennessee. So that always made sense to me. And Ole Miss is definitely on the rise. They had 10 wins last year. They got that program cooking right now. Now, uh, Georgia was another big front runner. Obviously, Alabama, when you're the powerhouse, you can recruit whoever you want. Georgia always felt like they're a quarterback away, right? They always put together an insane defense, a really good run game, decent offensive line, good receivers. They just never seem to have that elite quarterback, and he would have been the star straw to stir the drink down in uh, Athens. But he decides to pick Texas. Like I said, Texas has been pretty much bad his entire life. I mean, they haven't been in the national championship game since 2009. They've had multiple losing seasons, missed out on multiple bowls. They've been through a million head coaches. They even wanted to fire Steve Sarkeesian after last year. Five wins last year and a loss to Kansas. But they did turn things up with a solid recruiting class last year. Brought in Quinn Ewers, the number one quarterback from two years ago, will be starting this season at Texas as technically a redshirt freshman. This put Texas in a kind of an odd situation here because what do you have to do if Quinn Ewers is pretty good but not bad, but not good enough to have the crazy draft type around him where he might stick around for three, four years? And Arch think I knew obviously this has to do with Arch. He knows he can beat him out or he thinks he can beat him out. Could pick Texas in an awkward spot, but I'll say I think they're going to say screw it to Ewers, make him transfer again. But I don't know if he has any transfers left because the transfer rules are all over the place in college football. But Manning still just verbally committed. Things could change a lot in Texas. Texas is hoping they could have a rebound season. What happens if Texas is bad again and struggles in the Big 12, especially moving into the SEC? They're going to struggle even more with that. Does Manning maybe change his mind and flip the commitment? I mean, let's just look at some of the highlights here. Manning's a top quarterback, you know, in high school. We'll have that play. But what does Manning do? He might switch his commitment here. If Texas has another down season, if there's more rumblings about Sark getting fired, I don't think you can possibly fire Sark at this point because he landed the guy you want and you think this is a game changer for your program. Really helps moving into the SEC that maybe you'll be able to swipe away some of those recruits from Oklahoma and AM. We know AM just had the greatest recruiting class of all time this last year. The rules on NIL are about to change, so the money issue is good to get this done now. And there is a new rule in Louisiana where uh, Arch is a high school student that he can make NIL money. So I'm sure the check's already been written and paid for by Texas, and you have to. Your program's been a dumpster fire. You still manage to generate all this revenue. You need something to get the football team back going. I'm surprised it was this kid. I'm surprised it was Arch. I'm surprised it wasn't somebody else. It just always felt like he would go to an old-school SEC squad. But, hey, new school, I just... I don't get it. Guys think they can turn the program around. I always thought guys wanted to go to winning programs. Clearly, we're showing that 
Guys that are elite think they can change programs and money is the motive. This is all to do with money. Nobody else besides maybe A&M could compete with them from a financial standpoint, and he was never interested in A&M. So Texas writes the big check. Texas gets the pedigree. I mean, they've never been good in his lifetime. How many times do I got to say this? Um, I knew we were going to have to face him in the SEC as an A&M guy, but kind of sucks he's going to Texas. Would rather him go to Georgia because, you know, Texas sucks. But I'm really be interested to see what he does moving forward. Does he stay with the Longhorns? Does he possibly move on? I mean, it's hard to say. I think he's probably a man of his word. It seems to be the manning way of things. So I think this is probably set in stone. Unless something crazy happens, they they fire Sarkeesian. I mean, if they're like a three-win team next year in the horrible Big 12 moving to the SEC in the next two seasons, maybe I could see him decommitting. But I, I it, that's a real stretch for me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. How big of a get is this for Texas? Does this change the entire trajectory of the program? Is Texas finally, finally going to be able to say that they're back and actually mean it? Yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Does he flip? Does he stay? How big is this for Texas? Again, like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, share this video with your friends, and I'll uh, see you all next time.